Okay, so this is a little demonstration about the issue on the SDS1202XE scopes with the probe compensation with the um, BA models, the very first uh, production run of them, had the issue with the compensation being incorrect um, internally with the capacitor which needed to be added. Now, if you haven't seen the other video on how to resolve that, um, as in how to put it apart, the capacitor, that sort of stuff, um, how to install it, how to recalibrate it, that's all, that's all there in another video. So we're going to have a look for that. Um, this is like a supplemental video just to show the actual issue. Now I'm actually simulating this by misaligning, I've, I've miscalibrated the inputs to, in order to simulate it. But it is basically much like this, very similar to this, what it looks like, okay? So what happens, I've currently got this on channel one, I've got the probes on the um, test point here, one kilohertz output. So probe compensation adjustment point. So you're supposed to stick that on there on 10 times and you calibrate your probes, right? Not a problem. Now, what the issue is when you go between ranges. So if I'm at, if I got like one, uh, one volt range here. Oops, sorry, one volt range there. Nice compensation, it's nice square, no issues there, right? You a little bit around there, just to rise time stuff, nothing particularly unusual, okay? It might be slightly exaggerated because I've got the thing misaligned currently because I'm simulating it. Now if I change ranges, uh, oh, use the right dial, be helpful. Now we've got a two volts, you see it's changed shape. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to one volt, go to fine, and I'll bring it down slowly. So there's 20, all right, so 0 0.18, 0 0.2, all right, that's where it changes ranges. So 0 0.18 looks absolutely fine. 0.2 has got this slope here. All right, the compensation is not right. Okay, so that's one direction. It can actually be in that direction. If you compensate the other way, I'm actually done doing this one. I'll do it on channel two, just to show you. All right, so this is when you compensate the opposite, opposite direction. So again, this is set to um, be right. I mean, I've got it exaggerated again. Actually, I've got it exaggerated probably a bit too much to be honest. Let's just give it a bit of a tweak. Should at least be representative okay so your conversation could be that way like that and when you go ranges there you go it's, it's, it's ramping the same way sorry I've, I had done it this way on purpose sorry I've forgotten so that is ramping up very slightly there okay um, and then it gets more obvious when you change down right depending on which way you tune the, the, the um, Compensation. So if you tune a compensation on a two volt range and up, it'll be one way. If you do it the other way, it's different. So it should be the same compensation across the whole voltage input range, and that's the issue with them. Okay. So it could look like this where it goes up, but it could look like that where it goes down. Okay. It could be either way around. Um, so that's what you have to look for. If if this issue is present. When you're changing ranges between 1.18 volts and 1.2 volts um, on the pro compensation port, then you have an issue. Okay, um, this is currently say tuned to make it do it. That's why it's a bit weird, but okay. So you see it's changing there and there. Okay, so if it's changing on those ranges, then that's the issue. Now I'm going to recalibrate this and. Um, show you it can be done okay. Okay, so I've now uh, calibrated the um, adjustments. Don't forget this is after the capacitor has been installed. So I've done a calibration. So if you look at the rework video, it shows you how to do the calibration right, with the voltages you use. 1.2 volts and 12 volts uh, peak, peak to peak at 10 kilohertz, and that's how you adjust the uh, actual probe conversations inside. So go and look at that video if you haven't seen that. It's got links to the instructions on how to do it, that sort of thing as well. Okay, I've done that calibration now, and I've compensated the probes already. I've done that probe compensation. Now I've got these both set at 1.2 volts right now. So if I go 1.18, you see it's still okay. No probe compensation issue anymore. That's now fine. Do the same to the other one. Exactly the same. No issue at all. All right. That is not changing at all. Right, so if it was slightly off, I can see it's slightly here, but then this line here is perfect. But this one's got a very slight little bit there, 
Um, if that really worries you, then you could just tweak the, the calibration slightly more. Same with this one here. This line here is perfect, and this one here's got a little bit just there. But trying to get that balance between them is um, a little tricky. Um, you know, it's almost perfect on both, basically. All right? You know, they're both. It's it's linear, which is what it should be. Okay. Um, so as, from what I can see, that is absolutely fine. That's what it should be like. Okay. If, you, if you're worried about more than that, then you're probably being a little bit too fussy. All right. So. So that just shows that adding installing those capacitors and properly calibrating it does resolve that scope probe issue. Okay, um, that, you know the compensation does work fine. Don't forget this is off the internal reference here, which is where the issue is showing up, as I've already demonstrated. Okay, so yeah, it's it's fine. It's not an issue. Okay, um, just follow those instructions. If you, if you, I mean, my recommendations are basically if your scope has this issue and it's a BA series unit. Well, serial number starts with BA. Then, firstly, get hold of your supplier, wherever you purchased the scope from, and see if they will do some kind of rectification for you first. Um, if it's an issue for you, you know it's only a minor thing, but it bothers some people. Um, but certainly, get hold of your your supplier first and see if they can come to some kind of arrangement with you about either giving you a replacement scope, taking it away, and fixing it for you, or whatever. Um, failing that, you can get the parts. They should be able to supply you with the capacitors if you're competent enough to install them. Right? If you look at that video, the rework video I've done, it shows you what's involved. It's very fine work. I should have actually used my microscope when I was doing that video to actually show um, a nice close-up of what it looks like when you're trying to do it. Right? But it's a bit cramped in there, so it's a bit hard to do that in, my, in that situation, so I didn't actually do it. But it's fiddly work. It's a little bit awkward. So unless you're good at doing service mount work, I suggest you do not do it. Find someone that is good at service mount work and get them to do it for you. And just watch that video anyway, you'll see what I mean. And um, so that's the real thing though. I mean, your distributor can get the parts in most cases, or you can find an alternative distributor. Maybe if there's someone else in your country or someone else that can support your country, you might be able to get it from them instead. Maybe directly from Siglant as either as also an option. You maybe email Siglant and um, get it directly from them too. Okay, because they they do want to resolve the issue. They don't want the scopes to all be fixed, but there are a few unscrupulous people around, especially on Amazon apparently. So I've heard. I can't prove anything, but it's what I've read that there are people on Amazon which are selling these first production run scopes over and over again. You know, they're sending them out. Someone's realising it's got this this scope compensation issue. They're returning it, getting another scope, and then this that person is reselling the same scope again to try and find someone which isn't onto it enough to actually realize that there's that potential issue there um, so there are some people out there which aren't doing the right thing um, if you do find one of those people I suggest don't buy them from them again buy from somebody else um, or get your money back and just have done with it and then buy from somebody else because there are people out there which are trying to support these properly and actually doing the right thing and correcting the issues you know there are people out there which are doing it and it's not you know it's properly supported but Unfortunately, there are some people which are not so good, and you know you have to be careful where you buy from. Check feedback and that kind of thing. But as you can see here, I mean, this is a correctable issue, and you know, it's the scope is fine after the correction has been done. You know, it's not like it's a major scope fault. It's just a factory optimization which has been incorrectly done. You know. They also thought that the tuning was adequate on, on the adjustment because the trimmer capacitors you use inside there to do the calibration. They also believed that they were adequate to cover the, the conversation range and it turns out they actually run out of adjustment range before they can compensate properly. It's not that big a deal really. You know, it's been made like a, a massive, massive issue but it really isn't. It's fixable without that much hassle I believe. I have a relationship with Signal, I have to admit that. I'm not a dealer, I've got nothing other than that, apart from having an agreement that I will get equipment from them from time to time to do reviews. And that goes back to them as well. I don't keep it, it goes back to them. So um, that's the extent of my relationship with them, so I should be completely open and honest about that. But, um, you know, so I have that relationship, but I'm, I, um, I also try and keep things rational. You know, if there's something I don't like about an instrument, 
I will feed that back to them and say, hey, that this needs to be improved. And when they get that feedback, they do actually fix it. Um, so, you know, it's just the way it is. And just like this issue, they realise there's a problem and they have done things to try and correct that. But, um, you know, it's ideally what should have happened, I think, though, Signal should have taken back all the scopes, had them reworked, um, or replaced with new ones, and then, you know, sent back to the, to the, to the purchasers. You know, that's what I think should have probably happened. Um, but I don't know how many scopes they've got out in the field. There could be hundreds of thousands of them. I, don't, I really don't know. Not in all cases will this conversation issue really even show up. I mean, when I did my original review on this particular unit, I didn't even see it. Right? I didn't see this conversation issue. I didn't even notice it. And I was using the scope a fair bit when I was doing, doing review stuff and you know, playing around with it. So it didn't even stand out to me. But someone noticed it after, I think it's probably a month or so, I think after they came out, someone noticed it as an issue. And then everyone went checking and, and found that, oh yes, there is a problem. Right? But Siglent did address that, but um, maybe not in the way everyone would like them to. But um, you know, they have published documents, which I've added in the other video, which you can see, to uh, to correct it. You know, they've made it available. I think it only makes it available to distributors though and dealers, um, so they could do corrective work. But uh, you know, it, it's available online. You can get it. And I'm waffling again. So, right, have a good one. Catch you later. You can see what's involved here now. You know, we can see what it's like before and after. So, all good. Kiss later. Don't forget to tell your friends. Bye.